Hey everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this update video. So I hope that you're all doing really great today. And so in this video, of course, we'll be talking about these two disturbances that are noted across the North Atlantic Basin. And so before I go into details... Alright, so we're starting off with this Caribbean disturbance and so we're seeing that the chance is at 20%. The chance has been constant at 20% ever since this system was identified and so it has not really intensified and as a matter of fact, it's not looking too good right now and so we see that imminent development isn't anticipated of the system. It is when it moves into the northwestern Caribbean where we have that shaded region uh, where we, we could possibly see some intensification of the system but as of right now, uh, it is not in highly conducive conditions and that is the reason we're not seeing much going on for the system. And so let's take a look at it on satellite and we're seeing here that uh, the shower and thunderstorm activity in association with that uh, disturbance is not a lot. So it's very limited right now. And so uh, the reason is because we've had some dry air that is in the vicinity of the system and the shear is also not the very, very best right now, but it is not too hostile out there. And so we'll see what's going to be happening with it as it makes its way across the Caribbean and in terms of this possibly being a threat to land and so uh, intensification is possible in the northwestern Caribbean yes but if it is going to be managing to get uh, itself together and we see more shower and thunderstorm development within the system uh, it could bring some increased rainfall to sections of the northwestern Caribbean such as portions of Central America Jamaica maybe the Cayman Islands and Cuba as well but if it is as it is and not producing a whole lot of shower and thunderstorm activity then it there shouldn't be too much impacts in those areas but it is possible that we could have the system making its way into the Gulf of Mexico and uh, let's see what's going to be happening with it there if it manages uh, to make that move guys. And then here we have this second disturbance here out in the main development region. So the chance for this is at 30%. It has not raised since yesterday and so uh, it is expected to move on a continually westward motion and possibly intensify uh, while it is going to be out there in the main development region. And then as it heads closer and closer to the Caribbean, we might start to see somewhat of a west-northwestward to northwestward-like motion with this system here. So let's see what's going to be happening with it. But again, changes are inevitable with these systems. And so taking a look at it on satellite, here we're seeing it. And some of that shower and thunderstorm activity is sort of dissipating within the system, but for the most part it is just a disturbance so as it makes its way westward and conducive conditions persist then we can definitely expect that uh, we will start to see it looking much better on satellite and it's a combination of that blob and that tropical wave uh, that I showed you guys yesterday and so now here we have this entire system here being watched for development and models have been consistent with this one developing as we're going to be heading into the new week uh, down to the latter part of the week and so so as I speak, let's go ahead now and take a look at what the models are showing, starting off with ICON. And so this is by Sunday, tomorrow, Sunday, the 28th of August. And uh, here ICON is picking up on that 1010 millibar low pressure system. Uh, those black lines are called isobars and they're lines of equal pressure. And so when they're in a circular manner with the pressure being at least 1013 millibars or below that, then we could be looking at a tropical cyclone. And the lower the pressure is, the stronger the system. And so going all the way down to Thursday the 1st of September here we are seeing that uh, the system is intensifying we're seeing a lower pressure here of 995 millibars definitely the intensity of a tropical cyclone and then behind it the, uh, the model is expecting that a wave to emerge off Africa this week will be developing and so uh, let's go ahead and see what euro is showing and so going to Thursday the 1st of September uh, euro is expecting that we will be having the system much closer to the Caribbean and it won't be uh, as strong as what the icon is showing and so headed to Saturday the 3rd of September Euro is expecting that this system is going to be making its way up towards the Bahamas we see a pressure of 996 millibars that system behind having a pressure of 1009 millibars and then development again just off the coast of Africa 1009 millibars there and so headed to Tuesday the 6th of September take a look at this so we have that system uh, that first one the 
one we're currently watching, you are expecting that it is going to be making its way up to the Bahamas. And we see more intensification, a pressure here of 971 millibars, which is the intensity of a hurricane. And so we'll have to wait and see what's going to be happening. So prior to this, Euro was expecting that uh, the system would kind of make its way a bit closer to the Caribbean, make its way uh, across Hispaniola, headed to Cuba. And now they're showing a more north uh, a more northern track with this system here so let's see what's going to be happening with it and then there we have those other two systems out in the open waters and then finally we're taking a look at what GFS is expecting starting off with Thursday the 1st of September and as I said GFS out of these three models GFS is the only one that is really expecting development of the Caribbean disturbance and so here it is showing a pressure of uh, 1005 millibars here once it makes its way to the northwestern Caribbean the model is showing that it is going to start intensifying and then it is showing that current uh, disturbance out in the Atlantic approaching the Lesser Antilles and some development behind it so something that these models agree on is that current disturbance intensifying as we head into next week and something else emerging off Africa and also intensifying so we could potentially be looking at two named storms maybe by the end of next week and the next two names to be used are Danielle and Earl and so in the case of a third system the next name after Earl is Fiona but GFS here is expecting that uh, that Caribbean disturbance will be entering the Gulf and intensifying and eventually making landfall in mainland Mexico with a pressure of 976 millibars. Meanwhile, it is showing something a little bit similar to Euro uh, in terms of that Atlantic disturbance making its way up, but not showing that it's going to be as close to the Bahamas and then, and then those other two disturbances out there. So this is pretty significant. So we have these main model runs here expecting that we will be seeing a development in the coming week and not just of one, but maybe two tropical cyclones and if that Caribbean disturbance manages to intensify then we could be looking at three and this is not surprising at all we are heading into the month of September and September is the peak of the hurricane season so this is something we all should be anticipating and so I would say that not just for these systems but overall if you're located in the Caribbean uh, Central America the Gulf Coast East Coast it's best to keep an eye out because we are reaching the time when an increase in activity is expected and as I mentioned that I want to show you guys something. So we're looking at these satellite imagery right now off the coast of Africa. And we see all this shower and thunderstorm activity about to emerge to the main development region and we're going to be seeing this being something continuous it's going to be somewhat of a trend as we progress into the month of september again it's the peak and we have all of this shower and thunderstorm activity all of this energy uh, going to be making its way off africa so uh we need to be looking out for those uh systems coming out from the atlantic those cape verde type uh tropical cyclones and so let's see what's going to be eventually happening and so guys that is really it for this update video on the tropics and of course i'm going to be keeping you updated as time goes by on both of these systems and anything else that will be out there and so if you found this video to be quite informative please give a thumbs up and you can share your thoughts in the comments or ask a question i will try to respond as best and as soon as i can and of course remember to always be weatherwise.